Hey everyone, Jeff here from Hot Tub Owner HQ, and I've got other videos that show you how to drain a hot tub, but I get asked a lot about where to drain a hot tub. Is it okay to just drain it on your ground? Is it okay to dump it at the sewer drain at the curb at, your, at the front of your house? Where do you dump the hot tub water and how do you do it safely, legally, and everything else? So that's what we're getting into today in this video, how and where to drain a hot tub when it's time to change your water. So it is time to change my water. I'm going to be doing that today, but that's not what I'm going to show you here. So first of all, you want to know that you shouldn't add any chemicals for at least two days prior to the day that you've picked to drain your hot tub. Also, leave the lid off more than you would normally because the sun's rays will help break up and dissipate that chlorine or that bromine in the water, chlorine especially, because it breaks down very quickly in sunlight. So no chemicals whatsoever in here. Now I am doing a biofilm clean out. I do that every time I change the water in my hot tub just to get rid of any excess bacteria in there. And if you're not sure what that is or how to do it or if you need to do it, I do have another video on that that I'll link to down below. You'll also see a card for it at the end. But I also am doing that with this draining of my hot tub. So I've already done that kind of previously. And again, I've just sort of let, let that go for a couple of days here so that I can drain this water as safely as possible. The other thing you want to do is check the pH of your water and make sure it's relatively neutral. That's going to be somewhere around the seven mark, but most of us just use the test strips and check the color on it. So I'm going to check that now. You don't want pH that's super low or super high because that will be even worse wherever you do drain the water to. It will hurt the grass more, the trees, that kind of thing. I did mention briefly uh, about sewer drains. You don't ever want to drain hot tub water at the sewer drain at your street because that feeds directly into the nearby water supplies, the, the creeks and the streams and things like that. It doesn't get cleaned or filtered or anything like that typically. It just flows right into the nearest body of water. And you don't want this, even if you've let it go a couple of days, you don't want this treated water just hitting the nearby stream. That's not going to be good for the water quality where you live. Now, a lot of places do recommend draining it into a what they call a sewer cleanout. Uh, you see that a lot on city websites and, and water treatment plant websites and things like that. Unfortunately, for most of us, that's not realistic because it requires making an appointment with them. They open a manhole cover. Most of us don't have a way to drain the hot tub that distance. So even if you see that on the, the city website where you live, I wouldn't worry about that because it's just not realistic for most of us. Most of us are going to drain it somewhere in our yard. That's what I do. The trick is to find the most discrete area. And then, like I mentioned, let it go a couple of days before you drain it. That way the chemicals have dissipated. But before we get going draining mine and, and looking around my yard so you can see where I drain mine, let's go ahead and check the pH to see, to make sure that it's in that normal tolerance range of somewhere around neutral. Let me do that right now. All right, I'm just going to dip my test strip in, hold it for about two seconds, kind of shake it off, and then I'm going to check. And the pH is actually a little on the high side, so I'm going to add a little bit of pH reducer to bring that pH down. Let me kind of show you what this looks like close up. There's the side of the bottle, and there you can see the test strip. So you can see the color is actually a little high. It's probably getting close to 9.0 on the pH. You don't really want it to be above 8, so I'm going to bring that down. Now, typically when you run the jets in your hot tub, it does raise the pH a little bit just from the aeration. And so normally if I was treating the pH, uh, I wouldn't turn the jets on. I would just add it and then let it sit for several hours before I used it. That way it, the chemical can just naturally disperse into the water. For the purposes of this video, I am going to turn on the jets, knowing that it's going to keep the pH a little higher than I might want it to, uh, but I want to get this done quickly. I don't have all day to spend on this. So I'm going to turn the jets on, which means turning the power back on. I always have the power off when I shoot my videos so the hot tub doesn't kick on and make a bunch of noise while I'm trying to talk. So I'm going to turn the power on. I'm going to add this, I'm going to turn the jets on. We're going to get that pH down a little bit. Then we're going to go find where in my yard is the best place to drain it. So 
I don't have to lower the pH a ton, so I'm probably going to add about a quarter cup of this. I do typically eyeball chemicals when I add it to my hot tub. I don't get a measuring cup out, but you're welcome to if you want to. I'm going to turn the jets on first and then pour this in. Okay, I've let a few minutes go of the jets on and the chemicals go into town in there. If you notice my hot tub is a little bit foamy, that's because I did the biofilm clean out a little while ago. And so some of that chemical is still remaining in the hot tub because it is a foaming cleaner to get rid of the bacteria in your pipes. But I'm gonna dip the test strip in now, shake it off, and the pH is now somewhere around 7.0. Let me show you what that looks like. So now you can see the pH is down at pretty close to neutral, which is what you want when you drain your hot tub water. So now let's look around my yard and talk about some good places and bad places to drain your hot tub's water. So right now I'm standing just outside the back edge of my hot tub and you can kind of look around my yard and you see that white fence is the fence between my house and the neighbor's house. This back fence, I'm lucky that I have this. This back fence is ours. And then if you notice, there's kind of a, like a little no man's land before you see the, fen the neighbor's fence on the other side of it. Let's walk back here a little bit closer so you can get a better view of it. So right from here, the back fence line, the neighbor's fence is probably close to 20 feet on the other side of this little no man's land. And it narrows that way, but it gets a lot wider that way. And in my case, this land is county owned. It's not owned by an individual and it's not big enough to be built on. So it's never going to be sold. It's just kind of a no man's land. You see some branches, you see some cactus, uh, not really grass. You do see some trees over there, um, but there's really nothing right here except for branches, cactus, and rocks. And for me, that's the perfect place to drain my hot tub to. You may not be lucky enough to have that kind of situation. What you want to avoid, though, are, of course, tree roots. And I also, I have dogs that hang out back here, so we don't really have a lot of grass in this particular area. If I did, I would want to avoid draining it on nice parts of the grass, like I mentioned, tree roots. You also want to avoid draining it near the foundation of your house. And my hot tub is on a deck, as you can see, and you definitely want to avoid draining it right by the foundation of the deck that your hot tub is on, if yours is on a deck like mine is. You just don't want 600 gallons to suddenly flood a relatively small area and hope that the ground isn't doing any shifting, especially with the weight of the hot tub pressing down there. So I'm not gonna drain it there. I have a, a deck that extends out this way and then a tiny home. I'm not gonna drain it anywhere near any of that. I'm gonna drain mine back here in this little no man's land where it's branches, rocks, and cactus, and still a good distance away from my neighbor's yard over there. Um, if you're not that lucky, the other thing you could do then is to drain your hot tub in small amounts in different spots. In other words, like drain it, let it go for a little bit, maybe over in that direction, and then move the hose five or more feet in that direction, and then just kind of disperse it over a wider area of ground. But just avoid anything that's really super nice, like a flower bed, or if you have a part of your lawn that's extra luxurious looking. If you have small trees, I would avoid the small trees. The bigger tree roots are a little bit more impervious. And uh, especially if you've let your hot tub water go for a few days, you're not gonna have a strong amount of chemical residue still left in there. Uh, just uh, use common sense and do what makes the most sense for your particular situation, even if that's not ideal. Okay, like I mentioned, I do have other videos that show you how to drain the hot tub from a technical standpoint. So I'm not gonna walk you through all of that in case you've seen that video. And if you haven't and you want to, just go check it out on my channel. But I am gonna do a quick plug for this thing. This is my submersible pump. 
and I can drain my hot tub in about 15 minutes using this thing. You can also just hook up a garden hose to it, of course, but it's going to take a couple of hours to drain that way. This thing, not super cheap. It's about a hundred bucks. I'll put a link to it on Amazon down below in the description, but it's worth its weight in gold for how often I use it. I use it every time I drain this. I also have an Intex above ground swimming pool. And when I need to winterize it or if I'm changing that water, I use it on that too. It works fantastically. All I do is it's incredibly simple. It's so simple. It almost seems too good to be true. I just plug it in and then I just drop it in. That's it. I drop the whole thing in there. The whole thing is waterproof. This thing is a float. And so it, it senses when it's underwater and then the, the water automatically starts to flow through this tube. I don't have it plugged in right now, which is why it's not flowing. Um, and then what I do is this, this hose is a 25 foot hose. So I run this to the area of my yard where I want the water to come out at. And like I mentioned, it just do, does it in 15 minutes. That gets me going back in my hot tub that much quicker because it is of course going to take a while to fill back up and then to heat back up too. So this gets me going a whole lot faster. Right now it's about 11 a.m. where I am and if I want to soak in my hot tub tonight using this thing to drain it is going to be crucial in allowing that to happen just with the number of hours in the day. But anyway, I'm not going to bore you with any more details. Don't drain your hot tub in your neighbor's yard. Don't drain it at flower beds or tree roots. Don't drain it near the foundation of your house. Drain it in the most inconspicuous spot that you have in your yard. And if you need to, move it around a little bit as it's draining so all the 600 gallons or however big your hot tub is, isn't draining all in one spot. And again, don't just dump it at the sewer drain up at the curb. That feeds directly into the nearby ponds and springs and, and uh, lakes and things like that. So with that, I will see you in the next video.